You're following a Redbud Groups lesson featuring Explore the Bible. Redbud Baptist Church is located at 801 Slide Road in Lubbock, Texas. Redbud Groups meet Sundays at 1010 a.m., but we have other small groups that meet throughout the week. Grab your Bible and study with us. We are going church, growing disciples. Enjoy the lesson. Hello, everyone. We're here doing Explore the Bible, and Andy's decided to come help me do this. She's uh, going to take the lead and teach us all about Ezekiel. <laughs> anyway, we're in uh, session two of Ezekiel, and it's going to be uh, chapter 11 of Ezekiel, and uh, verses 2 through 4, 14 through 21. And as you know, when we start doing this, uh, Andy's going to take us a little bit farther than that, too. So, But it's all going to be in chapter 11 of Ezekiel, and and if, if Ezekiel's been hard for you guys, it's been hard for us too, just okay. to figure out everything, understand everything, and and we'll probably let you know some of the problems that we're having with it, and and you know it's probably some of the same problems that you guys are having with it as well. It's not, a, you know, it's the truth of the Lord. It's just trying to figure out what that actually means during that time and what it means for us today as well. So it's it's pretty hard to to you know we have to have the Holy Spirit lead us obviously, you know, and teach us everything we need to know, but. Go ahead and grab your coffee, uh, grab a donut or something healthier, but grab your Bible and come join us for this Bible study. I'm going to go ahead and pray and we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for a chance for us to get together. And Lord, just uh, guide us through this lesson. Let the Holy Spirit lead and let us apply it to our hearts and then to our hands and feet. In everything that we learn, Lord, let it be a chance for us to be more Christ-like and others to see that Christ working through us. And Lord, that might be a chance for us to lead them to you. Lord, don't let us get in the way of that. Lord, bless it for your glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. The name of our lesson is Saves. Yes. So okay. I don't know. It seems like you're reading through most of this, and it's not talking about saving here at first, does it? But but it is giving hope. And it, it is it's giving more, hope. It's more about, it's more about hope. Um, I, I think it helps me. And studying, especially something I'm not really familiar with, to figure out what the surroundings here. So this is, uh, you remember at the time that the kingdom divided, it divided into the northern yeah. kingdom and into the southern so Israel kingdom. and Judah. Israel and Judah. Um, David and Solomon were the only kings, I guess, that ruled over a, a combined kingdom. So, now, the uh, southern kingdom, tribe of Judah and Benjamin, I believe it, right. I believe it was, followed the family line, the Judah family line. There was always a king on the throne that was from the, li the line of, of Judah. Right. Uh, li lion, but lying. Lying. And, right. But not so with the northern kingdom, uh, which is sometimes called Israel, and then that's, and then, Sometimes Israel refers to both of them together. So I usually just say northern kingdom. Yeah, that is kind of something confusing about the Bible. Sometimes we're talking about the combined, and which was the intent anyway, just yes. to be Israel. But um, but there were I guess because there were more tribes of them in the northern kingdom. But there was the ten, the ten tribes and then just the two. But I, I usually refer to it as northern kingdom to. And that that would it, make sense. Yes. Yeah. But they didn't follow a particular bloodline they were just right. it was more militarily or whatever they had no good kings all the kings yeah were, i were mean evil. uh and i caught me off guard a little maybe bit, ones that weren't as the, the, bad as the others but correct the, i think maybe the, started out it, is it the the northern kingdom that had two that were okay at one time kind of or may not as bad maybe, you know maybe. the ones that were, were tearing down the temples to other gods and things like that but yeah there was no Consistent. Uh, I mean, there, there were more. There were more good kings. There was plenty of bad, probably more bad kings. But there were more good kings in the southern kingdom, so they lasted correct. a little bit longer. They lasted a little bit longer. So and and yeah. The this um, the time that we're sitting out about now, the northern kingdom had already fallen to the Assyrians. So yeah. So and the southern kingdom. Yeah, so what they call Israel is already gone. Is, the, is, and that was uh, Jeremiah that was uh, profiting was, to them, right? Uh, he actually, he may have, I think he may have 
but he also did to Judah too, because, little, yeah, because yeah. he is he is um, Ezekiel comes just at the tail end of yeah. Jeremiah's. I just found that out this but, week. Yeah, so I, I, I want to say Isaiah was the one more more, more yes, to he was more, Judah, he, he, yes, and Judah repented. Yeah. But Israel really didn't, or the northern king did not repent, and, and they, they went were, into captivity typically. quicker or sooner. Yes, or it was about 137 that. years later for right. the southern. And this is uh, the beginning of the end for the southern kingdom. Correct. They, this is actually, Ezekiel was taken in the second captivity. The handwriting captivity. on the wall here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so so this, is, this is where we are. The northern kingdom yeah. is, is gone. Uh, the southern kingdom is, has already suffered two deportations. Yeah. And what part of what Ezekiel prophesies side is going to be the end of the, the, the destruction of the temple, Correct. which at this point is still standing, and that comes not too much later. But he is actually in exile also. Correct. He probably had, um, I read somewhere he probably had his own house. They weren't, I don't think they were beaten and tortured, and they pretty much lived a life, but the, but it was in yeah. was in captivity. It, it sounds more like they're trying to assimilate them yeah. to and into to the, their, yes. Their, yes their system, and, and that's uh, why they they originally deported the best of the correct the ones that are most influential the Ezekiel, that type yes. of stuff. Yes, and and that that's the plan. It's not you know they're not really under any type of slavery or no. anything like that no. to do, and um, and they're pretty yeah. much I guess to a certain extent. They're able to go on with their worship. However, the temple is back in Jerusalem, and this we're yeah. going to see later. This could this could be a problem to, to some of the people because yeah, they they, be. they think it, it it's a certain status. Yes. Well, <laughs> God's know, come, presence was in the temple. Yeah, and this so is we, what they're and um, uh, Ezekiel was from the priestly line. I don't know whether he had actually become a priest because he he, he received this um, call from God when he was thirty, and that's the age at which I think priests are usually yeah. ordained. So, so, but but he was in the priestly line, and he apparently was in line to be a priest. But he definitely is a prophet. He is. <laughs> he definitely is a prophet, and he is from the the tribe of Levi. So last week we saw God's calling to Ezekiel. Right. Okay. So um, when we ended. Actually, last week ended a little bit on hope because it's uh, God told him that um, if he, re, you know, if he preached to the righteous and the righteous repented, then they would be okay and he would be okay. No matter what the response of the people what were, right. he it, would be held responsible. Fact. And if he warned them, then he would not be held responsible. Right. So yeah. if he didn't warn them. He would be held responsible. But if he did warn them and they didn't even whether repented or didn't repent. Yes. Then he it wouldn't be blood on his hands, no, basically. No. Yeah. And um so that that's kind of where we ended last week. Correct. Um in chap okay, chapters eight through eleven describes a vision God gave Ezekiel to reveal events leading to Jerusalem's judgment. Right. Okay, as we study this and and kind of remember, Ezekiel is living in Babylon and but he has the in the vision he is taken, and I, I'm guessing it's in some kind of a dream, or it could be physically, but he... Right, we just don't know for sure. For sure, but he is taken. Yeah. He he does see what's going on in Jerusalem, and, and, and then, of course, he comes back. So And, you know, dreams seem real. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They <laughs> you know, do. And if God's in control of this, then it's going yes. to seem real. Yes. So, but, uh, but whether, he whether is, it actually was taken, which can happen, he can yeah. do that. Or, but um, he is step, or he was taken up like uh, perhaps like John and was it uh, Paul that was taken up to the second heaven? Anyway, yeah. he is given a vision. Or Philip, who you know yes. moved, you know that type of stuff. You do have, so it could be either way. <laughs> we're we're just not sure. Here. But anyway, anyway, he it was in God's. He was he was, was he was he was seeing God's glory. Correct. In what was in the in in the, what was happening? So. Um, so he's he's in either in a vi in a vision. We'll say a vision because yeah. it says that he's uh, yeah, a vision. He's in a vision, vision glory. Yeah. Um, he's taken to the temple of Jerusalem, and he sees the worshippers who are worshiping in the temple. And it, and if you read that chapter, chapter eight, you'll you'll see they describe the different idols in the in the temple in God's temple. Yeah. And so God told him. He said, "I'm going to uh, put a mark mm -hmm. 
I, I will put a mark on some of the people. And they will be saved. But he had uh, soldiers or men ready with a sword to kill the ones that didn't have the mark. And this this was was um, what what he was um, planning to do. And he told he told Ezekiel about it. And Ezekiel wonders, you know, and we see a couple times in here he expresses his dismay at the fact that that all the Israelites will be destroyed. And of course, God answers that and gives him some some comfort in that. Right. And, and when he, you know, and God says that, you know, he said, I um, I will pity these, his, this people no longer. I've right. been forbearing yeah. with him and, and, and I'm, it's, done. It's not, I'm you know, done. Evil bounded. It's, uh, the judgment is intimate. Yes. intimate. And he says, I just won't pity anymore. my people anymore. And, and, and that's his chapter 9, 1 through 11. There. Yeah. His glory exalted by heavenly attendance rose up and ho hovered at the east gate of the Lord's house. And that's how chapter 10 ends. And so then we'll go into um, chapter 11. Right. Okay. First verse of chapter 11, um, God's spirit took Ezekiel to the east gate of the of the Jerusalem. And it says God's spirit that either in a vision or... Right. Uh, and there at the gate is a group of 25 men. These were some of the leaders of Jerusalem. And we're going to see that they are actually giving bad advice to the people. Right, right. And you, so <laughs> you, you want to read, go ahead and read verses uh, 2 and 4 for us and see what they're saying. Uh, chapter 11? Chapter 11. Or, right. Oh, before we do that, I, uh, no, yeah, that's, that's right. The, 13 okay. doesn't come to later. I had right. mentioned that you would So chapter there. 11, verses 2, it says, And he said to me, Son of man, these are the men who devise iniquity and who give wicked counsel in the city, who say this time is not near to build houses. The city is a cauldron, and we are the meat. And, um, you know, I, I, I kind of put this similar to Facebook, you know, and I know this may be kind of weird, and, and I'm not sure if everybody understands, but. You know, you put stuff out there on Facebook, and people do, and they, they want to get people's opinions on it, right? And, you know, there might be one person that's giving this person good advice, and the rest are not. Yeah, exactly. And and the only one that can't see that is the person, person. that's trying is seeking the advice. And uh, so all these leaders, wise, yeah, leaders. wise men, are, are giving them false hope. Exactly. You know, exactly. False hope. And, and, and Ezekiel is coming in saying, you know, what God's going to say. And that's like, the, you know, you guys are already doomed, you know. The, the um, well, we'll see throughout Ezekiel. It'll say the Lord says, or this is the word of the Lord. He uh, almost in every verse to emphasize the fact that this is this is God's words, not coming from Ezekiel. This is what God says. Yeah. And. And they think that when it talks about you know the, the meat in the pot, they're they're the meat. Yeah, they're they're the the, the prime rib. You know, that, that's one of those ones I'm thinking. By the, yeah, that, that this is the opposite of what you first read it. Yes, because when you first read, it, you think, oh yeah, well, their, their goose is cooked. Their goose is cooked. cooked. Yeah, they're being fried up right now because no, they don't being, realize it. But what they're saying is, we're the choice meat being protected by this cauldron or being cooked. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. we're 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 the select. In exactly. fact. They think they're the elect at this point. They, they do. Think, they think they're going to be the remnant. That's the remnant. Be. I mean, after all, they're close to Jerusalem. We're in Jerusalem. Or Jerusalem that's where we it's can to worship be at. at the temple. And we're going to see they talk about in the next uh, few verses about the people that they're so far they're away. Far away. So they're, we're going. They and, can't be and, the remnant, you know. And the people prefer to believe this, just like we like to believe that, things sometimes. That, that we're it, yeah. yeah. And that's not well. And and we. I'd rather believe good news than bad news. I mean, I think that's just... Oh, that's, that's human nature. Yes. That is human yes. nature. I, I think even the prophets didn't necessarily want to come in and say, doom, doom, doom. No. I, but but This weighed heavy. We learned in last week's lesson yeah. that this, this this weighed heavy on Ezekiel's heart. But I think they obviously rather go... They'd rather do that than be against God. Yes. Because they don't want to go against God. But yeah, it, it's it's not... It's not human nature to to want to take bad news <laughs> to someone else. You just yes. don't want to do that. But... But God, of course, tells him to. I mean, he, he tells him to, not only he tells him, he tells him twice, you know, which 
we know in the Old Testament it means it's important. And you know? that's right. To prophesy, he emphasized yeah. how urgent it was. Prophecies against them, prophesy, O oh, son of man. You know? That's right. We, yeah. you, need, you need to, this, this is urgent. And that's verse 4, by the way. Yes, that is verse 4. Yeah. Okay, uh, we uh, verses 5 through 12 continues the warning uh, of the prophet uh, and the prophecies of judgment. Now, in verse 13, I'm going to ask James to read this in just a minute, that leads into the next group of scriptures. Ezekiel struggles to understand the depth of Israel's sin and ask God if he is going to completely destroy Israel. So, would you read verse 13 for us, Okay, please? Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 13 through 14. No, just 13, right? Just 13 for just right 13. now. And, we'll and it came to pass, while I was prophesying that Pelatiah, the son of Benaiah died. Then I fell down on my face and cried out with a loud voice and said, Ah, oh Lord God, will you make full end of the remen remnant, or yeah, remnant, sorry, of Israel? Yes. You make full end you gonna, you gonna, of the remnant of Israel. Yes. And that's a question. Yes. So in his response to Ezekiel, we're going to read here in just a minute, we see the hope of where, of, uh, <laughs> The hope of restoration okay. instead of judgment. It shifts right. from judgment to the hope of restoration. So uh, go ahead and read 14 and 15, please. In verse 14 it says, And the word of the Lord came upon me, Son of man, your brothers, even your brothers, your kinsmen, the whole house of Israel, all of them are those of whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Go far from the Lord. To us this land is given for a possession. Okay. That last phrase there is what the, these men of, of Jerusalem are saying. You know, you, you are, you know, y'all are, are in Babylon, you exiles. We're, we're here. We have possession of the land. And, and, right. And uh, uh, the, God tells them, you know, what what the remedy of that situation is. But I want to know, there again, the word of the Lord. There again, it's... Right. it's and he refers also to Ezekiel as the son of man, which... And he but does he's, that. He's, 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 like, he's among the exiles. Like, yeah. How many times? Like a hundred and something times yeah. or something like that? He he is part, this identifies him as part of of, of the exiles. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's even a part there earlier where where he's packing his bags, right? To to illustrate that they're yeah. going. Yes. You know, yes. <laughs> they're going. Yeah, yeah the, and yeah. The, there's a lot of uh, um, those chapters that would really be interesting to study. We can't get it all in, can't but get it all, this, no. this, we could do this for a uh, a year almost. Uh, we could take a, a chapter a well, week and, and yeah. I, well, me and you could do that. We'll we just could, do we that could. and we'll study through and get it all down, yeah. right? <laughs> but it is, it's interesting. It's much more interesting yeah. than I thought it was going to be. This, this I is definitely been, one of the, one yeah. of the books where you really, I yeah. mean, not, not saying you always should pray to the Holy Spirit to teach you. Right, going right. Along. But this is the one of those ones that you really have to spend some time in because be open to, yeah. it, it is really hard for it to be opened up to realize well, what exactly and I, and I think part of it is is that that he he the prophecies he makes has a not too far in the future fulfillment, yeah. and then a far and then a in the future far future a messianic. Yeah. So and there in today's lesson there's a couple of places where we'll we'll right. see that. So uh, he 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 tells him he said tells him that your relatives those. Who have the right to redeem your property? And of course, we don't have time to get into the whole uh, policy property, of redemption. Yeah. But in a nutshell, the Israelites had every right to redeem. They they were t not to lose their property ever. They were always to be given right. an opportunity to redeem it. Yeah. And he says, and okay, you the, the year of jubilee. Yes. Uh, they 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 whatever was loaned out or leased out or whatever you want to call it, it's given back. You know. And, uh, and slaves the, uh, were returned back to their families. Uh, uh, debts were considered canceled. canceled, all that stuff. But yeah, but the main thing was the property. It should never, ever leave, I guess, the tribe, yeah. if you will. That's why you know, a, a brother could redeem, you know, um, the next of kin could redeem the property yeah, for the tribe. So, the kids been redeemers stuff yeah, going on there as well. And, God, and God is so assuring him always that just have the property. That just because they're in exile, that that hope isn't gone. Right, they, they still have that hope. And he says that that you and he says um, and your entire house and all of them. This this applies to all of Israel. So there will be a remnant. I I guess you would assume from from uh, the whole house of Israel that will. And I don't know about the lost ten tribes. I don't know how that 
fits in there, but all works in. <laughs> uh, we'll do that another day. So, but um, but these men of Jerusalem are thinking, you know, we're we're in you know possession of yeah. nine tenths of the law. We're here. You're there. Yeah. But God's going to set them straight here in a minute. Right. That they may not actually be the remnant. Yes. <laughs> and and um, so let's look at um, what God tells him. Now, you just hold on here. He says. Yeah. He uh, he corrects their assumptions. So read verse six. 16, 4, Verse 16 please. of chapter 11 says, Therefore say, thus says the Lord, Though I removed them far off among the nation, and though I scattered them among the countries, yet I have been a sanctuary to them for a while in the countries where they have gone. Okay, so uh, there again, the Lord God says, He, he um, with each... New prophecy. He he emphasizes the fact that this is coming coming from the Lord. Right. And um, he he promises to bring him from um, from other uh, among the countries. And then that last promise says that for a little while I have been a sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. Mm -hmm. So there's a picture of um, uh, on down here where the the spirit of God actually leaves the temple at Jerusalem, and I think he he comes to Babylon maybe. But he he's assuring yeah. them that even in Babylon, I am there, and they always considered the temple to be where where God's presence was. But God's presence is today is in, is in so, our hearts. And that's one of the things that we always I always find interesting, you know, because we have our sanctuary. Yes. yes. You know, we always talk about the sanctuary, but the sanctuary is actually where the Lord is. Yes. And the Lord that we know is in our hearts mm -hmm. and and with us. Well, we're the temples. Yeah. Of God. So. I always wonder why we call these sanctuaries where, Sanctuary. where 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 we meet to worship and stuff like that. I guess, you know, when we're gathering, I guess we could say the sanctuary because the Lord should be with us at all times, you know, whenever three or more gather, you know, that type of stuff, but uh or two more gather. To, to maybe to affirm our maybe it's a place where we, we affirm our worship. Right. And our adoration. But but him. what he means by sanctuary here is obviously the the well his presence. The presence. That yeah. just well, like in Revelation twenty one, twenty two. The Lord Himself will be the temple, right? And so God had judged them and scattered them among the nations, but He did not abandon them forever. No, He says, I, I, "My presence will go." I, I think this is in Exodus. Of course, it was uh, applied to the uh, uh, children of Israel as they were living and leaving Exodus. But he says, "My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest." I, I, and that and that was true. So He He is um, He is encouraging. Ezekiel and and giving him hope. Yeah. And so then verse 17, what is he to say to the people? Therefore say, thus says the Lord God. There again. I will gather you from the peoples and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered. And I will give you the land of Israel. Okay. Here's one of those places. Right. <laughs> where he, um, it's the near future and the far yeah. future. Yeah. Because we know 70, it, it could, um, this refer could refer to the decree of Cyrus 70 years True. later when they did go back to the land and they did gather right. them. But it also can refer to the, uh, uh, in, in the, during the Messianic period, whenever Israel is. And, of course, Israel is, you know, and then 1948, they were gathered again as a nation. They were. And but they will be whenever whenever they whenever they recognize Christ as Christ as the Messiah, right. then then that time. I'm I mean, they, they, they are as far as I know recognized as a nation now. Yeah, you know, um, so that's part of it. But, <laughs> you know, but, so we well, it just just think. Okay, just think about the history of Israel, and this I'm talking about history. I'm not talking about oh that's Bible. I'm talking about history of Israel. Mm -hmm. A nation the size of is it Delaware? Is it, like one of the smaller states? Yeah, Vermont, Delaware. Something okay, really... in that little bitty spot over there, and everybody and all those other big countries hate Israel. What? Why they're threatened by Israel? But look at what has happened. Is isn't Israel the only nation that has ever been dissem disseminated and come back together as a nation? Yeah, yeah. I mean that's and just look look at uh, the attempts to. The, and during World War II to annihilate them, and they yep. they came back, and at that time people thought they'll never get back together, and then 
and they'll never be a nation. And then, and there's a story of, uh, I heard the other day about, about Harry Truman that would be real interesting. We don't have time to go into it, but his, um, he wasn't even necessarily, now that was Richard Nixon, but uh, that wasn't necessarily, um, um, he didn't like, he didn't necessarily like the Jews, but he helped him during the uh, Yom Kippur's war. Right, right, right. But, but Harry Truman, um, he remembered, you know, about Israel having their own land. And he was the one, you know, was that God made responsible for making the nation. Nobody ever thought that would happen. But I mean, their history, and, and now, and you know, I, I you, um, who was, I heard somebody say the other day, you know, a fear for Israel. Yeah, I do, but I don't. I don't think they'll ever be scattered again. But it's just the history of that nation right. belies any logic that we would have. Yeah, yeah, it's the, and, and, you know, their, their hope. Yes. And their willpower, you know, seems to be in something different. And 70 know. years ago, they didn't have that hope and willpower. Yeah. And, Ezekiel probably didn't seventy years seventy. It, he probably didn't didn't have the, this hope that they would ever be back together. But God's telling me they will be. Okay. Right. Anything else on that? But that's I didn't mean to get off on that. But it's just no, I, no. I I it makes me excited whenever I see how God has worked down through history, right? And has made liars of all of us. True. Yeah. I mean, you know, and that's kind of how I how I am kind of on the scientific side too. You mm -hmm. know? When, when when all these theories are out there and they go with the theories instead of the truth of the Bible and all these things that they find uh, haven't disproved the Bible. Yeah. In well, fact, a lot of them are upheld by the Bible. It's the theories that they have that may not fully fit the Bible, but it's a theory. It's not. Well, so before, the more and more of the things that show a creator, yeah. you know, uh, still point me back to the Bible. It's mm -hmm. like, see, there's this order. There's this there's this thing for these to go on. It's, it's amazing how these things work together and stuff like that. Well, that's God, you know? <laughs> well, it's like um, years ago in the early part of last century, you know, people said that, you know, we, we consider Moses to probably to have written the first five books of the Bible. Right. And there were people that said no, because writing, they didn't have writing back then. Well, lo and behold, what did they discover? Yeah. The Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah. And, and 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 you know most of Isaiah was in there and things like that, mm -hmm. but but even if they're passed down orally, yes, you and know, probably through song and stuff like that, you know, the author is still going to be Moses. You know, Moses is the one mm -hmm. that's going through and telling the children and everything about this is what God did from this point on. You know, and it gets kind of strange when we start thinking, well, well, Moses is dead here at the end of this thing, and we have like Joshua going on and stuff like that. But but I'm sure you know Joshua is is there, passing down the story at that point. It, you know, one where I I um, was listening to commentary last week about well it was it was basically about the resurrection and why why it had to be true, um, and one thing about the Bible, you know, that that makes it seem plausible is because every one of their heroes except Jesus has flaws. Some of them have. Yeah. Terrible flaw. And in, almost in any other thing, all these people are superheroes. Yes. You know, perfect and, and in every way. They, you know, they, like if you were writing the New Testament, you know, like in the New Testament, you know, the women were kind of the heroines of the resurrection. Yeah. Oh, you and bring that up by, every by time. People <laughs> back then wouldn't write something like that if yeah, it weren't true. They, they would, would they not have give brought the, the women in because the women did not Or have. told about Peter's denial or some of the, right. the, the fact that, that it shows... The flaws in man, you know, makes that makes, it has to be God breathed. That it, yes, or it, or it supports more. It supports. It support, yes, yes. And, and yeah, everything that we we find more and more all the time, things that still continue to uphold the Bible. Yes, and not against it. Yes. So I mean, I, we've seen where places they're actually determining that hey, there was a King David now, mm -hmm. and they've they've been able to find artifacts that that show the name David in there and stuff, a like King David. So the more and more. They uncover stuff, you know what? You know, you know, honestly, I think it's what God allows to be revealed. Yes, yes. You know, I, I uh, these too. things weren't found hundreds of years ago. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but uh, we just got to remember that we you always got to keep an open mind to the you know when when scientists are putting out theories that you know they are theories, and when other people are are, are putting out stuff and ideas and thoughts and stuff like that, well, you got to see where are they coming from. You know, are they coming from a, a mindset that's already been made? 
you know, which we we fall in that. Yeah. I mean, we can fall in the fact that we're Christians, so we got this. We want to uphold the 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 Christian view and Christian Bible stuff like that. So we got to remember we're there too. But but everything that we start seeing here, like I said, more and more as age to age goes, it seems to point more and more to a Creator, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and and that's kind of what and 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 things, that's you know. and that gives us hope. It does and give that, us hope. That gives hope. But it's incredible that He's you know giving them. Um, you know, of course, after judgment to let them know, hey, well, and, here's and, the judgment, but but the, we but have this hope. hope. And um, in that in verses 20, 18 through 20, it, we're going to see what this spiritual transformation yeah. looks like. And this is wasn't um, kind of rev reminiscent, maybe a little bit of Jeremiah. Was it Jeremiah that talked about the new heart? Yeah. Or Micah? Okay. 15 and, 15, go ahead and read 15 through 20. And then we'll... Oh, 15 through 20? Yes. Well, I mean, 18 through 20. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I was like, okay. We already read 15. Let me grab my... Yeah. And when they come there, they will remove from it all its detestable things and all its abominations. And I will give them one heart and a new spirit, and I will put it within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. And they may walk in my statutes and keep my rules and obey them, and they shall be my people, and I will be Peter their God. God. What a promise! Yeah. I, I the um, this the new heart. It it points out the fact that during in in scripture a, a heart kind of refers to not that thing that beats in beats beats in our chest, but the the uh, <laughs> a mind or the will or the yeah. desire to do. And um, so this he was going to give them a, a new desire. And also a new spirit, and now I, I this is what I likened this to, and, and it may not be be correct, but it's also the the new heart is what we get when we accept Christ. Our heart has changed. We we've, we've repented. This is we made made an intentional uh, decision that 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 we want to follow Christ, right. and the new spirit could be the Holy Spirit. I mean, could be the Holy right. Spirit living within us, uh, and this. When we're saved, we're uh, and I always think of Melba. She always could explain, explain justification, right. sanctification, and glorification. Right. But when we're saved, we're justified. We're justified then. We're we're, we're we're saved then from the penalty of sin. Correct. We won't die. As we live our lives in Christ, as they should be, we're saved from the power of sin. Right. I mean, the sin doesn't doesn't have to have power over us. And that is we're being sanctification. So this is right. what I think. This is what I saw it as right. as this new heart, and you're being sanct. And it's a it's a process. You're growing then, in to be more Christ-like, yes. from our view. Anyway. Yes, yeah. and then of course you know when we uh, finally are with the Lord, we yeah. are in our new are, new bodies, new, new body. Yeah. We're glorified and, yeah. and that we're we're saved from the actual presence of sin. Correct. So I, and then I this I think when when we're saved. That's Jesus. Jesus is did that. Jesus did that for us. Absolutely. He offered it. Yeah. Our sanctification, the Holy Spirit, you know, right. and then final the glorification before God when we we see God in His glory. But anyway, the, but but this is this is a beautiful picture. Yeah. And it says, and I will, they'll be my people, and I will be their God. So the the promise continues. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we see that a lot. You know. Uh, in the Old Testament, the illustration of a heart. Mm -hmm. um, what's the word they use for it? It's like heart stone, but hardened. Heart, well, hardened the, heart. We well, hear about that, it talks yeah. about, about the, and of course, the heart of stone. That that implies heart. It's, you know, you just sit there like a stone. Have you ever heard that it's expression? Well, just sit there like a stone. Just sit there like know? a stone, yeah. I mean, stone does nothing. I mean, of course, you can pick it up and throw it. But I mean, it's, uh, a rock is, is hard. It does, you know, there's no life in it. But this is going to be a beating heart. It's going to be pliable. And, uh, and and, and kind of call me, you to be obedient to the, the Lord. The, the end of it kind of puts me back into um, Joshua, I believe. You know where he's talking about. You know the the you know he he they'll be my people and I'll, I'll be, be their God. yes yes. And you know it is you're right. You know so that's it's almost you know it's the cycles we keep seeing mm -hmm. you know and and coming back to the Lord and and you know going back away you know we see it all through the judges. You know, we saw it there at the beginning, the judges, the exiles, all that stuff. And just seem, even nowadays, you know, you, you keep seeing that cycle where they turn away from God and then call back out to God and return to God. And, and, and he, he and lifts his them promise, back up. And, 
his presence, like back in Exodus, his presence yeah. will go with you. He's he's promising that today. Yeah. And so so that that we can be excited about that. The Christian faith is not a list of do's and don'ts. Rather, yeah. it is a personal relationship, it's a relationship with God. That's the thing we've got to remember because we're always asking, well, what can we do? What yeah. what do we need to do? How you know, I'm having this trouble with this and this trouble with that. You know, I, I am I not doing this right? And everybody thinks about it as do's and don'ts, like a list. Mm-hmm. And and there's no list. It's having faith in God I, through I, this relationship I, with Him. I read somewhere this week it said uh, maybe if you're worried less about what you're uh, about what you're doing for God, but celebrate Him. Yeah. Instead of you know you know, um, of course we we want to do for Him, but but we we need to. We, you, gotta, you gotta have that checklist. You know, yeah. Uh huh. Well, I don't. We all do that. We do sense that we want to. Yeah. I know, and but that's not what's. That's not where the salvation is coming from, Mm-mm. and that's not what their love is coming from. It's it's the love that you have for them that's making you go through that list. Probably not sitting there check marking it, but you're you're doing the will of God, and, and 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 people around you could probably see things going through you, you know, that they didn't see before, and that's because you're falling, when you're following God. Obviously, you know, we 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 still have that choice not to follow Him, and and that's when um we're we're just not going to be. You're, you're not going to be happy. I mean, you're, you're, you're you know, like um, uh, what well, we just got done with the Ecclesiastes not too mm-hmm. long ago. And it, it's just this, these things are not going to fulfill what you want because they're not eternal. They, they are very temporal, very, very temporary, you know, and they're just going to, you know, fall apart. The only thing that's going to be, uh, that's going to stay and you're going to enjoy is going to have to be something that's going to last forever. And, and, and this back this to the is, relationship, you know. This is the hope he gives us, but, but this, this is, this, this is such a beautiful picture, but verse 22, verse 21. Yes. Verse 21. But, but as for those whose heart goes after their detestable things and their abominations, I will bring their deeds upon their own heads, declares the Lord God. This is a certainty. There will, there will be judgment. Yeah. We, we offer this, but there, but, but there will be to be judgment. Um, in the rest of this chapter, the, the vision ended with God abandoning his chosen dwelling place. Right. And place. They, not not his people. Place. place. The, the, the yeah. temple. But but they thought because they the, they lived there with a the temple, it was, you know. And, and, and I can see that. I can yeah. see why they were yeah. thinking that, you know. And leaving it vulnerable to enemy invasion. And so... Um, what did I ask you to read? 24 and 25? Let me read 24 and 25. Yes. It says, yes. And the Spirit lifted me up and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea, to the exiles. Then the vision that I had seen went up from me and told the exiles all the things that the Lord had shown me. Uh, following the Lord's announcement, God's glory went up and hovered over the Mount of Olives, east of the city before yeah. disappearing in the spirit of God transported Ezekiel back to Babylon. So whether he was in the spirit or body, he was, uh, and he told the exiles, you know, what he had seen. So um, just, just real briefly, because the con- the context of the lesson included through chapter 19. So I'm going to give you just sentence, summar- summations of those. Uh, chapters 15 through 17, we see the problem pertaining to Jerusalem's sin and judgment. Right. And then um, chapter um, 18, um, we, we see that the Lord assured Ezekiel he would hold individuals accountable for their sin, although he took no pleasure in judging them. Um, chapter 17 is interesting because in uh, the last part of chapter 17, he shows the future hope after judgment, which again... Can refer to the near future or the or, or the, the far future. future. Yeah. And then in, in uh chapter finally in chapter nineteen, um, Ezekiel lamented over Israel's rulers. They would they would be as captured lions caught in nets or cages and taken to Babylon. And these are probably the kings I think it uh, it said something about the, the princes of um, uh talks about the uh, the captivity of the princes of of, of Israel. And uh, yeah, a, a lament over Israel's princes. But this yeah. was probably toward. The, this was probably about. I, the. The temple 
was destroyed about I think I think it's about in 597 shortly and but the end of the kingdom didn't come until 586 so I'm not sure at which time or maybe it was at the end that they took the you know they took them and talked about catching them in nets right and taking them and one of them had their eyes put out didn't they or something like nothing. that yeah and so, so the, I, I'm not. I'm going to study that a little bit more. I'm not right. real, real sure the, the captivity thing because it. I've it's, I've seen four waves, and I've seen where they said three waves. So yeah. I, I'm not sure that that last one. I, I'm not sure what happened between the between the destruction of the temple and the end of the kingdom. There was, so I need to study that. And a little then bit. I guess they come back in what two different groups, but yeah, really uh, it's kind uh, of like a scattered thing. Yeah, it seems one, like Nehemiah and and, yeah. and uh, Ezra, right. two different. Correct, and yeah. it just uh, but but you know you already have people that are there. Yeah, in each well, the, one. the farm and, the farmer yeah. stayed in, in um worked the land. Worked the like land. That. Yeah, the yeah, there there was so, there was always and even in uh, and part of it's just to give us um, ways that we can study it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So we're talking about the same things. You know, it may not be an exact line at this date or exact line yeah. at this. Everybody's gone. Got, and, everybody's and here. Some, but it gives have, us a sections that we can talk about and understand what the other person's talking about. I read an interesting, and, and these were just suggestion right. about, you know, we we're talking about the lost tribes and, and how the remnant was, was restored. Right. That suggested that perhaps whenever the Assyrians attacked, that some of the, some from the Northern kingdom fled to Judah. And so that maybe some of those tribe members in, integrated with the Jew, with the with yeah. Jew. And I think we because talked about that in one of the other lessons we, before yeah. about that. Yeah. And I thought that I I thought that it was is interesting. interesting. Yeah. And, and and we're not positive, but I guess we we every once in a while we'll find evidence of uh, different tribes being. In yeah, and, and there's theories about where the different tribes are. Right. And there's the thought that all twelve tribes will be, you know. And I I don't I don't know how the the uh, present day uh, Israelites or Jews that Jews, that yeah. that claim claim heritage all the way back to, to Benjamin every, or whatever. Or, yeah. Do they? Do they have tribes they belong to? Do they know what tribes they are? Or, yeah, or? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I haven't stayed that deep into it. I have like that. That'd be interesting to to uh, uh, maybe know. do we have, do we have a, a Jewish temple in town? Maybe we, can talk we probably do. <laughs> so, I but it is interesting. I, I you know I have been to a couple of things with part of my family members and stuff like that to see um, them do di you know different things, bar mitzvahs and stuff like that, and carrying the squirrels around mm -hmm. and. Rolling like, out the scroll and doing yeah, a, a messianic Christian yeah, would be would be a good one to yeah. contact. And you know, a lot of them still and and observe some of the Jewish holidays. And I think that's okay, don't you? Oh yeah, uh, but you know, I think they're doing more for like the tradition. Tradition, yeah. Yeah, I mean, not 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 the they be, that yeah, but but it was real. It's part of their culture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, um, but they believe that the Messiah is the Messiah, and they're not you know, still waiting if, for the Messiah. If everything that happened yeah. in the Old Testament, we should be thankful for and, and celebrate. And we're going to see, you know, we see in Revelation that, you know, his people yes. is going to come back into play. Yes. Yeah. So. It's interesting time. It's really hard to get it all together yeah, and understand. It is. But, and, and, you know. And the deeper awesome. you get into Ezekiel, the more complicated it gets. It, it is. Too bad it's I'm going to be out of town. I won't be able to do this. Oh, no. We're going to meet you like the next three weeks or so. so. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway thank you guys for being part of that i'm going to pray and we're going to go ahead and get out of here dear heavenly father lord just thank you for more of your word lord and lord thank you for the holy spirit teaching us lord let us even get deeper in this that that uh you know andy and i have so many questions and we're trying to figure out the answers to them and, and lord um you're the only one that's going to reveal these answers to us anyway so mm -hmm. lord uh we pray that, that if it's your will, that, that we learn even more. But, Lord, that we'll take the stuff we do learn and apply it. Not just think, oh, that's cool history or something like that. But, Lord, learn from the mistakes. Learn from the ones that, that, that continue to walk in your ways. Learn from your word, Lord. And learn what the Holy Spirit's trying to teach us. Mm -hmm. Lord, just bless this time that we have here together. Bless those who are watching this right now. And Lord, just, um, Lord, we're just can't waiting for that future hope where you gather us all back together again in your presence. And Lord, just thank you for the forgiveness that you gave us through that salvation of your son. 
Lord. Thank you in all things. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys.